most of the time it was about five degrees Fahrenheit outside and so my cameras all died within about a minute of filming just because the batteries couldn't take the cold. On this episode of Dirt Cheap Daily, 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 Daily. At the end of this video, I have a really good long explanation on why I chose the parts I did. Finally found it. Oh. Hallelujah. How about that, huh? That is good to go right there. Sweet! It's my transmission for my drift car. Okay. Right there. Oh yes. This is mine. All mine. Heck yes. Let's go grab some tools and pull it out. But last thing, just to make sure. Right here. R150. We're good. We're golden. 96 R150. That engine in it. Sweet. Well, let's get going on it then. Okay, we're all suited up. Got my tools. I got stuff laid out under here. So we can go ahead and start pulling bell housing bolts. yesterday I had to get back to work because this junkyard is about an hour away from where I work and so I had to take off before I could finish but it's almost there so I got all of the bottom bolts off and all the starter off and all the side bolts. There's only one left. And that one, you can see right now just because the sun is there. There's that one left. to get to because there's an exhaust pipe that goes over the top so you can't get it from the engine bay without taking the exhaust pipe but those bolts are being a pain like I got three on this side and three on that side and then the fourth one I couldn't get off so Pretty stupid. That was so easy with just another 12 inch extension. <sighs> Could have had it out yesterday if I would have had that. 
There is one more bowl though. That's what I thought. It's roughly the same spot, but on this side. I think it's just hanging on by the shifter. I had to get the shifter off. Trish <laughs> Fur! Do you want to just let it fall or do you want to let your camera? I could bench press it down, I guess. Um, that would be pretty Either way, cool. yeah, actually. I don't really care about the bell housing, so. I suppose. It, it should fall <laughs> if you just push it back, I think. I don't think this will get stuck. Let me, hold on, let me get this centered so it has more room in there. Put shaft still hooked up and off. It's nope. You're clear. Should this be ready? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> don't want to get too close. I know, right? Oh, it's stuck on something on the back side. Oh, up top, it's a little hook. You got that uh, pry bar? Yep. Should be you the pry bar. And I'll oh, hold on a second. Once I get it all the way, it should go. I'm going to push it, but. It's like little cable clips or something. For it. It's probably a speedo cable or something. Oh, yeah. Um. Rick. That was probably the guys at the yard trying to get the dang, uh, drain plug off. Oh, that's a bummer. We're good. A good one. Still intact. Oh, it's too greasy to see the gear ratio, but that's all right. If it's a 373, which it most likely is, I'll be happy. And if it's not, then I can upgrade to like 411 anyway. Does it help me at all? build. Last week I went and I got the transmission, the Toyota R150, and today on President's Day in this great weather I uh, picked up 
a Ford 8.8 inch uh, IRS rear differential, so an independent rear suspension IRS. So just the pumpkin, basically an R200, but way bigger. So I chose an R200. I got an R200. No, I didn't get an R200. Some of you might question why I got a 8.8 uh, instead of an R200, and mainly it's because uh, R200s aren't plentiful around here at all. Uh, maybe if I was on the west coast I'd have a better chance of finding them, but around here it's impossible and everybody wants like 300 bucks for one, which is a joke because it's just a rear differential that's probably going to get blown up at some point. So I chose the 8.8 because at the junkyard they're 70 bucks. That includes the core charge. Um, and they are everywhere. Um, Ford Explorers have them. Ford Explorers are all over the junkyard. And there are basically unlimited amounts of uh, gear ratios sold by Jegs or whatever other speed parts store you're looking for. Parts are plentiful because I'm in the US. So makes sense for me to just use the Ford 88. It's like doing an LS swap in the United States. You can do it for pretty dang cheap because they're everywhere. R200s aren't everywhere. And since I'm going to be having to fab up the rear subframe anyway, might as well fab up one for a Ford that is cheaper and way stronger. This thing is going to be bulletproof. I'm really excited. I'll be able to throw down the line. I hope to drop in an H6. Um, probably just a three liter to start probably boost it um, and then eventually do a three six uh, boost it again and so I should be looking somewhere around four or five hundred horse in the next I mean years down the road when I'm finally finished with it if I'll ever be finished but Subaru power at least I should be looking around 400 450 wheel horse which would be totally solid and uh, great to drift with so anyway yeah happy to have some parts sitting around in the garage because I don't even have the litigator out here with me right now so winter is long and uh, <laughs> gotta do something in that last stretch it's almost spring we're almost to March and we're getting the last remnants of winter saying hey we're still here so it's always fun going out in the junkyard luckily it's not that cold it's like 25 degrees and I was underneath the car the whole time so I didn't really get wet and I'm working pretty hard and so you're pretty warm enough with just a sweatshirt so it's fun I love spending time in the junkyard pulling stuff apart and I'm glad I was able to get that center differential out without having a uh, socket big enough to take the axles out. So I'm going to have to pick up a bigger socket, but I'm hoping to just use the stock Ford Escape rear axles. Uh, again, cost, super cheap. Junkyard, they're 18 bucks. And then uh, availability again. I can go to any O'Reilly or any AutoZone or any parts store and pick up a replacement CV axle for an 06 Ford Explorer. They're just everywhere. It should pump out my wheelbase a bit, uh, which will be kind of cool. I might end up doing a wide body on it just to fit it back up inside the body, but I'm hoping to be able to make it work. I also bought the spindle partially because uh, I couldn't get the axle off, and then um, because I want to see if I can use that rear spindle and adapt to make some adapter brackets or, or something, weld them on, I don't know. Anyway, I hope to be able to use that rear spindle um, and just make some parts to make it fit a Subaru. Because it has, I mean, it's made 
the emergency brake in it is the drum style. So it's got the, the disc that goes around the outside and then it has a drum brake on the inside that's the, the parking brake. But it's made to stop a Ford Explorer, which is a pretty big car. And so it would be kind of cool to see if I could just use the, it's not even hydraulic, it's just like a normal e-brake cable pull. It'd be nice if I could just use that as my e-brake, as my, my hand brake. So we'll see. I'm not a fan of uh, plumbing, especially brake lines, so it'd be cool to just do cable. We'll see anyway. Still waiting to hear back from Bill about uh, my bell housing adapter, but I should hear from him in the next few days. He, it is a business, and so I don't, I didn't expect to hear from him over the weekend. I don't expect to hear from him today because it's President's Day, so hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday. If I don't hear from him by Wednesday, I'll contact him on Facebook and say, "Hey, Bill, I want a bell housing." That's the, that's the big money sucker for uh, this build. I mean, the bell housing is 425 bucks, which is what I'm spending for all of the rest of the drivetrain components combined. So, anyway, enough rambling. See you guys later. Keep it or cheap.